Hey there, it's Mr. Martin. Thought I'd take a few moments to kind of explain this fossil find story that I'm uh, looking for you to do this week in online biology. What I want you to think about is, you know, how can you take the things that we've done over the last couple of weeks, being a paleogeologist, being a physical or biological anthropologist, or being an evolutionary biologist, and how can you turn that into a, a story that demonstrates to me that you have a full understanding of this material? And so uh, in, instead of a test this week, I'm looking for you to complete this assignment. Now, there will be a test next week uh, also on this material. But uh, think of this as a mastery assignment that uh, is uh, in addition to a test, a way for you to show me your creative side. And so step one is finding a fossil. Now, I don't expect you to actually go out and find a fossil, but this is the story part of it. What kind of fossil are you going to find? Uh, as those of you that came into lab certainly noticed that we had all sorts of uh, different fossil uh, samples, uh, the skulls. I've got bones of the rest of the body that we can use uh, to mimic this stuff as well. So we could have uh, a skull like this uh, that you found and, and any bones that go along with it. <clears throat> the other thing that you could do is uh, take a picture from uh, uh, something like in the upper right hand corner over here. Uh, this is a picture of uh, some bones that were found, uh, actually some famous bones that were found there. And uh, and what does it tell you? What can you learn from it? What story is embedded in these fossilized remains? And that's kind of the way I want you to run with this. I want you to act as if you've just uh, discovered this fossil as a team, not necessarily in isolation. Now you have the choice to write this uh, story, this assignment, either individually or if you so choose you can collaborate with some other people in the online class if you're looking for somebody to work with let me know I can try to uh, get you hooked up with the right person somebody who's also looking to collaborate with somebody or maybe you know somebody also in the class and you, you want to work with uh, one or two other people on this story and so you are trying to show the roles of each of these people and kind of what would be happening written as a story so this is paragraphs uh, completed there's paragraphs to complete this assignment and so if we look at the fossil find story uh, document that I've uh, got on the on the website for you and uh, on the screen here now uh, there are different pieces of this you know ten points of mastery about one to two paragraphs in length for you to explain to me uh, the background information on this fossil where were you why were you there you know, did you stumble across it, or were you out there on an expedition uh, digging for fossils as a paleogeologist or a, or a paleontologist? Uh, if you're finding something like a Neanderthal and you think that it is a Neanderthal, you might want to look into where in the world would you find a Neanderthal. Probably not in your backyard in Hartford or surrounding uh, community. Uh, how was the fossil found? So give some explanation about that. You can have, be creative, have some fun with the story here. And then <clears throat> also with the background, when you do decide what it is, you know, what was the scientific name? Is it Australopithecus afarensis, like Lucy? And then give it a nickname. The people that found Lucy certainly nicknamed her Lucy at that time. So that would be a, kind of that setup, the, the fun story part of it. And then you get a little bit more serious with the actual analysis. And here's where I'm really going to be looking for you to focus on what you've learned in class over the last couple of weeks. So when you're acting like a biological or physical anthropologist, uh, we made measurements either on a gizmo or in class. And so what kind of things would you measure on this fossil to help you understand what it was and identify it? How do those measurements compare to other things? And so in written paragraph form, you're talking about what a physical or biological anthropologist would do. And then also, where do you find um, they fit on our tree uh, of life? And so where, if it is a hominid, where on the hominid tree does it fit? And uh, there was an assignment, I think our uh, family tree mastery assignment would be have some good resources to help you with that. <clears throat> Another paragraph then would be, you know, if you had a friend that was a paleogeologist and, you know, found the fossil, they might also be the one to uh, tell you how the fossil would form. Maybe you are taking on the role of the evolutionary biologist and uh, you don't know a lot about how the fossil would form and so he would or she would try to explain in this paragraph, you know, oh, when gone to uh, my friend, the paleogeologist, they explained to me that uh, uh, fossils are formed and then you go into some discussion. Also, how old is the fossil? Now you could find out that, oh, Neanderthals tend to be uh, in this range of time. Well, how would they figure that stuff out? That's the story piece of it. Do you have some uh, indirect or direct dating methods? Uh, are you able to discuss uh, rock layers that it was found in? Talk about that strata or stratigraphy idea. Oh, 
And how are you able to then analyze radioactive elements? Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to do this. So how would you go about analyzing that information if you had the technology to do so? Uh, and so you're just getting at those ideas, showing me that you have a full understanding of it. Now, most recently, we've been talking about things like pictured down here, uh, homologous structures. And so this is where, you know, there might be some homologies with the skull, uh, whether it be slope of face or brow ridge or size of the cranium. But maybe you found some other bones along with it. If you only had the skull uh, to go with, what else was found along with it that might be able to um, be compared? And so we did a lot of comparing things uh, at the limb level, whether it be wing or arm or leg. And so maybe like the picture here, uh, you could talk about uh, if it's not a human, but it is a hominid, it probably has some homologous structures in the arms to humans as well as some of these other things. And so you, you wiggle that into a paragraph and then also talk about some of the vestigial structures that your uh, organism has. Uh, if it's closely related to a human, it might have some similar vestigial structures to that of a human. And so you might want to focus on some of that that was shared with you in the last week. When you're all done with this, uh, there's going to be a Dropbox for this assignment. And uh, the expectation is that you would uh, put it in the Dropbox uh, for me to then read and give you some mastery points. 40 mastery points uh, is quite a bit. And I would expect you to put some time into this. So this one's not due by the end of this week, but I'm extending it into the following week as well. So please uh, look at all your deadlines uh, online so you have a, a clear idea of when it's supposed to be done. Again, I like collaboration in this one. We haven't done uh, collaboration in online biology this year, but if you are looking to work with somebody, I highly suggest maybe finding somebody that has a similar uh, interest as you and uh, working with them uh, during resource to complete this assignment. Thanks so much. Have a good one.